Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the project management tool called Taskade. I will be giving you a brief overview on the tool, going deep into the different features and functionalities of the tool, and then finally showing you how you can adapt all that you learned to both manage and structure a software engineering project using Taskade. Now, what is Taskade? Taskade is an all-in-one project management tool. It is used by remote teams, I personally use it on a personal basis, on an individual basis. I have no team that is currently on board with me on the application. However, this just goes to show how versatile and useful this application is. So this application has all sorts of different features. It enables you to take notes, manage your tasks, manage your time, have a chat option so you can talk with your team in real time as you edit a different page and also a video chat option. So it is really the all in one hub for a team to execute all of their different work items and both share and exchange different things. So personally, I've been using Taskade for about three months now, and it has helped me become tremendously more productive. I actually started using it as soon as I started my current job or internship at Mercedes Benz in January. And ever since I've been using it to manage my day to day tasks, as well as take note of all the new things that I'm currently learning in my internship and saving them in my Taskade account. Before we get started, I would like to thank Taskade for kindly sponsoring this video. So full disclosure here, I actually reached out to Taskade myself because I had been using the application for over three months and I was having such a great time with it. So thank you so much Taskade for sponsoring this video. Without further ado, let's get started. So in front of me, I have the Taskade website. This is their sort of front page where they're showing you different things about the application, how it looks like, how it works. You can see here that you have the sort of planning part of the application, which you can use to manage your projects, manage your time and so on. And on the right side, you can see that you have a chat option and a video call option. Now we will be going into the real thing when I open up the demo and start showing you how the application works and so that we can play around with the different features and functionalities. So that's really it for this website. That's really how it looks. You can see here that it was adopted by so many great companies worldwide like Netflix, Sony, TransferWise, Booking, Lyft, and so on. You can see here that they are showing you how you can visually organize your different tasks. So here, for example, you have a list view for your tasks, which is the list of tasks that you have. You have the board view, which is typical of a uh, sort of Kanban board that you've seen on other platforms like Trello. So Taskade really is an all-in-one hybrid of Trello, Notion, and other project management apps. Add on to that the chat and video chat option, which makes it a powerful hub for teams that has all the different features that they need. So that's really how the website looks. Like I said, you have the chat option, you have different roadmap uh, visualizations, the calendar view, all sorts of different features and functionalities that we will be diving into. Now, another thing I want to mention is the pricing, because this is definitely very important for anyone who's looking into using Taskade. So there is the free plan and there is the unlimited plan. The unlimited plan is $5 per month. It provides different and additional things like unlimited storage, um, 250 megabyte file size as a total cap. It, you have unlimited tasks, unlimited projects. As of now, I am currently using the free option. I don't really upload too many things onto my Taskade account. So I have not really used the storage up and has not have not really um, have not really required to have the unlimited version. However, this may be something to look into if you plan on using it on a larger scale. So how where is Taskade? How can you actually use it? So Taskade is available on mobile. There is an Android and an iOS app, which I have. It's really good for when you're on the go and you want to check out your tasks, tick some tasks, or maybe you get an idea when you're on the run and you just open up Taskade real quick and type in your different ideas in a sort of list or a to-do list. There are also the browser extensions. Now I have the Chrome extension right here. What the Chrome extension does is basically when you open up a new tab, it will open up Taskade itself and will show you your dashboard in Taskade. So we'll see that in a second. There are also um, extensions for different uh, for other browsers like Firefox and Edge. There are also the desktop apps. So you have apps for the Mac, uh, for the Mac computers, Windows, Linux, and so on. 
So I actually have the desktop app on my work laptop because I started using this for work mainly. And then sequentially, I've been adding different things to it. So it started just as a work thing. And after that, I just kept adding more and more different parts of my life onto this application. So that's really it for the downloads. You can find the downloads in a link in the description. And let's move on to the demo. So when you open up Taskade, you will get this sort of dashboard that enables you to look at all of your workspaces and projects. So here is my dashboard. I have changed the background previously. I've changed this, I think, within the first maybe month of working on Taskade because I really like the vibes of this photo. You can change the background using this guy right here. You can change it to be a, a sort of color or different photos and whatever you really like. So this dashboard enables you to have an overview of all of your different workspaces and projects. Now, what are workspaces in Taskade? Workspaces are like an area for you to sort of concentrate all of the projects related to a specific thing, as well as concentrate all projects related to maybe one team. So for example, let's say I have two different teams. I can have a team of three people, let's say, you know, Jane Doe, John Smith, and uh, whoever else you want. And these three people would be in this workspace. Let's say I've invited them to my work, my personal um, workspace. They would be able to see all of the projects that exist in this workspace. So if I create a new project, they would be able to see it. Now, going back, I may choose to have other projects that I don't want Jane Doe and John Smith to see. So I would go to another workspace or I would create a new workspace. I could call this one maybe private. So I would call this the private workspace. I could give it any color and then I would create a new workspace. So now I will be prompted to invite other people or other members of my team. I personally don't want to invite anyone to this private. I just exit it and here I am inside this new workspace. So in a workspace, I can I can create different projects. Projects are like the basic unit in Taskade. So you have a project and within this project, you can create different to-do lists, different notes, different items. You can chat in a project, you can video call in a project. So the project is essentially the core part of Taskade. And these projects, like I said before, exist within different workspaces, such as this private workspace that I have here. I have a personal workspace where I have created a project for my undergraduate research project, which I am working on for my university. The project exists in my personal workspace. You can also create subspaces for your workspace. So I have a new job coming up in the fall. And you can see here that I have created a project for it called Logistics and Procedures. In this um, project, I have created different to-do lists for all the different paperwork I need to do, different information I need to send, um, different things that I need to have done by the time that I start this job. So I will be talking more about it later on on my channel. So this is just to give you a brief overview of subspaces, how they are exactly like workspaces, but they exist within them and they also apply to the same team. Now, you have other alternative workspaces if you want. So I have a work workspace. So like I said before, I actually started using Taskade because of my current internship at Mercedes. So I am going to be blurring out the different project names, mainly because I, this is, I have signed an NDA. This is strictly confidential. I cannot share it with you. But this is just to give you a brief idea of how I structure my projects. So I've separated different aspects of my life into different workspaces and I have created a different project for every single project that I have worked on at work. So these are all different products that we have in our team at work and I have completed tasks on every one of these projects. Another thing I have is this resources project right here. So let me open up this one actually and show you how it looks. So I have been learning R and Chinese while doing my current internship. My internship is a data science internship. It's not related to the other things that I talk about on my channel, like Python. Um, I talk a lot about databases, so I work a lot with databases. I had worked less with R. So I'm constantly learning things as I go in my internship, especially Shiny. So I've created this project right here called resources. In resources, I enter all the different links, different tutorials I've read or resources that I find concerning different topics that I'm learning. 
So this is a current list view of all the resources that I have. I can choose to change the view by going here and putting it in board. So now by changing it to a board, each block from my Taskade project has been moved to a different board. Um, you can see here that these things are called blocks. So actually, let me change back to a list and show you what a block really is in order not to create any confusion. So these are my resources. So I have this whole shiny thing right here. This is a block. OK, you this heading you have right here, this heading one, you can change it to be anything. So this heading is like the parent of this block. You have an infinite amount of hierarchy. So for example, I can add another resource and then this resource has a child resource and then this child has a child of child okay and then another child of child so you have so much hierarchy when it comes to working with your task aid tasks that it enables you to really have a very good structured approach to the way you write your lists for me this is very important especially when i take notes because i am someone who really likes to use bullet points i do not like long paragraphs and I find this very comfortable and convenient for me to always have different hierarchies for different topics that fall under each other. So this whole thing is a block. You can move your block by just dragging it, moving it on top of the, for example, golem block. And now this block is right here and the golem block has moved down. So the block has a heading and it has its children, um, its child sort of also block. So you can drag these guys around here you drag them like this, like that, you can reorder them. It's very, very useful and convenient. You have this thing right here called the fold. The fold is one of the best um, features of Taskade, in my opinion. It enables me to stay organized, especially when I need to hide things that I currently don't need. So I had shiny here right under golem, right? So I was, okay, so I accidentally just dragged it down. So let me just move it back under golem so as you could see what i just did right now is i dragged shiny to be a part of golem a child of golem what i basically want is for example i'm working on creating a golem uh, i'm using golem to create a package using r so what i'm going to do is i don't need shiny at the moment so i just press fold and i hide it and then i just don't need these different libraries and their resources right now for me, this is very convenient because it enables me to hide these things when I don't need them and keep my workspace organized and clean so that I can directly find the things that I currently need. So this is definitely a very plus for this platform. It's a very good feature in my opinion. So you have these blocks, you have these sitting right here in your project. So what else can I do with a project? I can add another block and this block could, for example, be a series of numbers and I could give it a title. I can change the format, can make the heading smaller. I can add another block that's just a paragraph. So here I would just type, for example, text and always, as always, you can fold these and hide them. So this is a very good thing, in my opinion. You can open up this guy right here. So this is actually the chat box. So what, the, what does this chat box do? It actually tracks the different things that you have before. At some point before, I have accidentally crossed out this guy that you see right here. So you can see it now. So I have completed a task. But it's just uh, for the sake of uh, just keeping track of all the different actions that happen in this project and the different changes. So it's a chat. So let's assume I actually had John Smith and Jane Doe working with me. What I'm going to be doing is say, hi, guys. and let's say I just added a new resource. So now I'm telling people that I'm telling my colleagues what I'm currently doing, which is also very good. However, this also does change in real time. So if they have this page open, they will be seeing the changes that occur as they occur. So I'm talking to these people, I send them a chat. Let's say we want to discuss a specific thing in this project. I can simply press start call, which would launch a video chat with my colleagues and enable me to actually talk with them. So this is another very great feature. So this is the list view. Now, if I expand these guys again, just for the sake of demo, let me change to the board view. So the board view, like I mentioned before, is a Kanban board. So you've seen this with maybe Trello or other different types of productivity applications. So the Kanban board will enable you to see all your blocks in a board view 
You can also see the call and chat option in a board as well. You can also hide this one if, in case it's annoying you or in case you're working as an individual. I usually keep it hidden, but I also don't really mind it. I really think the UI is very clean and it keeps all these different boxes in front of your background and just gives me a very fresh vibe. So other than the board, you have the action, which shows you all your tasks. Now, in this case, these are just lists of resources and not tasks. That's why you don't see um, actual due dates here or who it's actually assigned to. We'll talk about assigning in a second. The next is a mind map. So a mind map is basically how you can take your blocks and make them look and spread them out into a mind map based on their hierarchy. So I, of course, I had my resources, which is like the main node. And then I had the golem, which is my resources for a, the golem library in R, so, uh, which I was uh, learning. So golem, it's children, the different resources. I can delete this one by pressing backspace. So I come back here. I have shiny and the different things that I just added, different other resources, and so on. So the mind map is especially useful when you're planning a project and you want to see the mind map and see it just structured in this very nice way. Other than the mind map, you also have the org chart, which for me, it kind of looks like a mind map, but um, like switched or like sort of flipped. It looks actually maybe better in this case, in the case of this project, because we have like many different nodes. So it's good for us to be able to just explore the hierarchy and search through them and look for what we need. It's very interactive, very smooth to just go through things and scroll. I'm doing this all with my touchpad. It's very, very smooth. So I'm definitely rating this one with a plus as well. So these are really some core features of Taskade and how they sort of work. We'll be seeing much more of these features once I do the demo for how to structure your software engineering project using this tool, because come on, we're all coders here. You're all here because you're at the title. You want to learn how you can apply all this knowledge to make and structure your software engineering project. So in part two of this video, we'll be discussing exactly how you can exploit everything that you just learned to structure your software engineering projects. Mainly, we will also be exploiting a certain feature of Taskade that I did not cover in this video, which is using and creating templates. So stay tuned for the next part of this video to see how we're going to do that. And really, that's it for today's video. Please don't forget to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.